I'm given four three cent stamps and three five cent stamps. Now using one or more of these stamps which I'm given, how many different amounts of postage can I create? Let's first play with a few examples of how this works. So I'm given four three cent stamps. If I used just one of them, if I used just one three cent stamp, then the total amount I would be paying for the postage would just be three cents. If I used two of those stamps, if I used two of those three cent stamps, then the total amount of postage would be six cents. Now I have also been given three five cent stamps. So if I used one of those, if I used one five cent stamp, then the total amount I would be paying for the postage would be five cents. If I used two of those, then the total amount I'm paying for the postage would be ten cents. I could also use a three cent stamp in combination with a five cent stamp. The postage amount in this case would be eight cents. Or maybe I could use two three cent stamps and one five cent stamp. The total amount of postage would be two times three, which is six plus five, eleven cents. Or I could use all the stamps given. I'm given four three cent stamps, so if I used all of them, and if I used all the three five cent stamps that I'm given, then the total amount of postage would be four times three, which is twelve, plus three times five, which is fifteen, twenty-seven cents. Notice that we are getting different amounts for the postage for these different combinations. So how many such different amounts of postage can I make in total? That is the question. How many different amounts of postage can I make? So we have enumerated some of the possibilities here, but we need to enumerate all the possibilities systematically. And we can do that by means of a table. Now along the rows of the table, I have shown the number of three cent stamps that we could use. Along the columns, I have shown the number of five cent stamps that we could use. Now since we are given four three cent stamps, I could use one of them, or two of them, or three of them, or all four of them. I could also opt to use none of them. Since there are three five cent stamps available, I could use one of them, or two of them, or three of them, or I could opt to use none of them. So this table shows all the combinations of postages possible. So let's fill in the entries in the table. Since there are five rows and four columns, we have a total of five times four, or twenty entries in the table. Now, how many different values for the postage amounts will you find in the table? That is the question, and we need to fill in all the entries in the table to find out the answer. So if I used zero three cent stamps and zero five cent stamps, the total postage amount would be zero. If I used one five cent stamp but no three cent stamps, then the total postage amount would be five cents. The total postage amount here would be ten cents, and here it would be fifteen cents. So along this row, I'm not using any three cent stamp. I'm only using different number of five cent stamps. Along this column, I'm not using any five cent stamps, but I could use either one three cent stamps, or two of them, or three of them, or all four of them. 
and these would be the different postage amounts. So I just have to multiply these numbers by 3 to get these values. Now these entries are more interesting because we are combining one or more of the 3 cent stamps with one or more of the 5 cent stamps. So if I used one 3 cent stamp and one 5 cent stamp, the total would be 8 cents. If I used one 3 cent stamp with two 5 cent stamps, then the total would be 13. The total here would be 5 more than the total in the entry to the left because I am adding an extra 5 cent stamp when I move from this entry to this entry. Similarly, when I move from this entry to this entry, I would be adding another 5 cent stamp to the postage. So the total postage amount would increase by 5. And if I move down a column, then I'm I would be adding more 3 cent stamps. So the values will get incremented by 3. So if this value is 8, this value will be 11, this value will be 14, and this value will be 17. Similarly, if this value is 13, then this value will be 3 more than 13, 16. This value will be 19. This value will be 22. This value will be 18 plus 3, which is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. And 24 plus 3 is 27. So there are a total of 20 different entries in the table. And if you look at the values in the table, there are no duplicate values. All the values are different. All the numbers that you see here are different. So there are 20 different postage amounts that are shown here. But this particular entry where we are using 0 3 cent stamps and 0 5 cent stamps, we are not using any stamps at all, this particular entry is an invalid postage amount. And that's because we are given in the problem statement that we need to use one or more of these stamps. So we need to use at least one stamp. It could either be a 3 cent stamp or a 5 cent stamp, but we can't just not use any stamp. So this entry is invalid. And that leaves us with 19 different entries in this table or 19 different postage amounts. And that is what you were asked in this question. How many different amounts of postage can I make in total? And that would be 19. Now, you may be wondering whether it is generally true that the entries in such a table would all be different. Could there be duplicates in general? If there can be duplicates, then we cannot get the answer by just multiplying the number of rows with the number of columns and then subtracting one. In fact, if we had been given an extra three cent stamp in the problem, that is if we had five such stamps available, then we would have had an extra row in this table. And what would have been the value of this entry where we use five three cent stamps but no 5 cent stamps. Well, the total amount would have been 5 times 3, which is 15. But we also got a 15 here. Whether we use 3 5 cent stamps or whether we use 5 3 cent stamps, the answer would be the same. The total postage amount would be the same. So in general, there can be duplicate values in such a table. So if you are asked to compute how many different amounts of postage we can make, then we have to be careful not to count such repeating values more than once. We need to count the number of different values in this table, which in general will not be a simple matter of just multiplying the number of rows with the number of columns and then subtracting one for this invalid entry to get the answer. That general strategy is not going to work.